So in part one of this series, we took a look at how we could start creating dynamic WordPress websites using Jet Engine and Elementor Pro. In this video, we're going to take a look at expanding upon those basic fundamentals and giving you a lot more control of the data you display. So if you haven't checked the first video up, take a look at the link in the description or in the corner right now. But if you're ready to move on, then stick around. We're going to go through a lot of cool stuff right now. To follow along with today's video, you're going to need to make sure that you've got Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, and also Elementor Pro. If you don't have those, all the links are in the description below so you can grab yourself a copy, install it, and you're then good to follow along. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Now I've already gone ahead and installed Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters alongside Elementor Pro. And like I say, we've already created the basics. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the Jet Smart Filters and how we can start adding pagination or a way to actually navigate through the data that we actually have displayed on our page. So with Jet Smart Filters installed, all we need to do is come up to the template we created in the previous video. We're going to come down to the Theme Builder. And inside there, you can see we've got our event single, but what we're looking for is the event listing archive, which will display the actual events in order. Next up, let's just simply choose edit with Elementor. That'll open up the Elementor editor and we can see the template that we previously created with some of the sample data that we have available. So if we scroll down, you can see we're now displaying three individual events. If we click to activate this particular widget, you can see that we're using the event listing. We've got three columns and we're setting this to show only three posts at a time. So if we have more posts, how are we going to get to them? Well, we can use the JetSmart filters pagination option. Expand this out and we're going to simply come over to the left hand side. Scroll down until we get to the filters option. Now you can see in there we've got a range of different filters we can use. But what we're looking for is simply the pagination option. Let's drag that underneath our events. You can see that now puts some placeholder information in there until we tell it how we want it to work and what we want to work with. So if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see pagination four. In other words, what are we going to use to actually paginate? Click on there, you can see we've got a ton of really cool options. So depending upon what you're using and the kind of template you're creating will depend upon what you actually choose from this section. Because we're using Jet Engine, we're simply going to click on Jet Engine. The next option available to us is the apply type. We've got two options. We can use Ajax so there's no page reload. So when we actually choose the next page, the next page and so on, it'll just refresh the page that we're looking at without the actual reloading all of the page. Or if you prefer, you can use the page reload method, whichever works for you. You can also use query IDs if you want to, so you can use multiple widgets and so on. We're going to keep this really simple. We're just going to have the one control on this particular template. If we come to the controls then, you can see we can choose what and how we want to display our pagination. So you can see we've got enable previous and next buttons, which we can disable if you want to, and just have singular letters on there so we can easily go through or we can just enable that, whatever we want to do. We can even change the text in there to put whatever we think is relevant. So if we're working in a different language, we can put whatever we want in for our previous and next. You can see you've got the item center offset. We've also got the item edge offset. So we can offset the initial or the, the last values in there. Again, we'll keep this really simple. And even though this is shown as placeholder text, it will change depending upon the number of entries it has to paginate through. So you have control over that. Next up, we've got the style tab which gives us the ability to choose the pagination option and the items options. So if we want to, we can change anything we want on here. So let's just say we want to change the text. Well, we could do that easily by coming down to items, change the typography, and let's just change the text in there. And we'll use a different font, for example. And you can see once we do that, it immediately updates. We can change the size on there, all the kind of things you'd expect when you're working with the visual editor inside Elementor itself. You can come in and adjust the gaps between the horizontal and the vertical gaps and so on. So you can see we can adjust any of these so we can get it to look exactly how we want. So if you've got multiple rows, you can use the vertical gap between items or just use the horizontal. If you want to put a border around different things, you can do that as well. So you can see we can put a border radius on there. We can choose a solid border and then we can just fine tune that and say we want to have one on there. We'll up those to, say, six, for example, and we'll just change this then to a much lighter gray, so it's a much subtler effect. So you can see, very easy to do. If we want to adjust the alignment, we can do that simply by choosing any of the three options we have available. So let's leave it centered. 
let's just adjust the actual gap between the items just to open those out a little bit and if we want to we could change the typography color as well so say we take the text color and we'll make that a little darker than the actual outline edges and if we wanted to change the background color we could change that as well so you can do whatever you want to style this up in any way just to fit into the design you're working with and let's just hit update on there and let's test this out on a test page so I've loaded my test page in and as you can see we've got the options for two different pages and we can use the next option showing three at a time so we simply click on two that'll Ajax reload that in so you can see we go to the next lot of data and we now have the previous button because we're at the end of our pagination options or we can simply use the one to go back very very easy to do super simple to implement and gives you a lot of nice control over how this looks how it operates and what methods you want to use to reload your data so again a really cool thing to use inside jet smart filters so now that we've seen how to easily paginate through our data how do we order our data well it's pretty straightforward let's come over and select our actual listing grid once we've done that let's just set this back to display all six of our current entries so we don't rely on the actual pagination at this point okay so if we come to the post queries now we brushed upon this in the first video but now i'm going to go into a little bit more detail you can see we've got order offset if we expand that out, you can see uh, currently there's pretty much nothing going on. There's no orders, nothing at all. But what we can do is we can choose the different types of order offset that we want to work with. So you can see we've got post parameters, order and offset, tax query, meta query, and date query. We can use whichever we think is the right option to do certain things. So let's just keep this really simple to start off with, and we'll take a look at another option afterwards. Let's go to order and offset. Now what we can do in there is you can see we can order by or we can choose what we want to actually order this by. If we click that you can see all of the relevant fields that are inside there including meta values. Now you might be thinking well I want to order this by date or location. Well no, that's actually in there. You need to simply come to meta value and that'll open up the option to insert the meta key to order. Now this is where in the previous video I said it's important to name your actual meta fields in a logical fashion. As you can see in this one I've got event underscore time. So that's just a sample. So what this is doing now this is ordering them based upon their time. Okay so that's pretty easy. Let's just say we want to change that to date. So we can now set that to be event date. And what we can do now is we can specify we want descending or ascending. So you can see once we do that, now look at our dates. We've got June 10th, June 13th, August 18th, October 11th, November 25th, December 21st, and so on. So as long as you know the actual meta field that you want to use, you can easily add that in there. The next thing is then if you wanted to, you could add additional options in here. You could simply come in and say add another item. Then you can just choose what's the second filter you want to use for your query. So you might say that you want to do something like a meta query. Again, you need to put the query, uh, the field name in, the ID. So some example would be date underscore event, date underscore time, date underscore location, and so on. You can then do the operator that you want to use on there. So you can see you've got a range of different things like is equal to, not equal to, greater than, and so on and so forth. So a ton of different types of operators. And then you can insert the value. So you can see we've got a whole range of different things we can do. We can even choose the type of information we want to query against, whether it's numeric, binary, characters, dates, date times, and so on. So there's tons and tons of options available inside the post query. More than I can go into in this video, I just wanted to demonstrate because this is one of those little things that unless you actually know it's there and some of the things you can do with it, you can kind of very quickly skim over and miss it completely and then just wonder how do you do things like order the information that you've got on the page that you're working with. So let me just give you one more simple example. What we're going to do is we're going to come back down to the order offset and we're going to change this a little bit. Change from order offset and we're going to say we want to use a meta query. We're going to use the key of event location. So again, this is where I've set up my meta fields, giving it the name event underscore location. We've got the operator then, so you can see you've got equal, not equal, and so on. We can then insert a value. So let's just say we want to find all of the events that are just in London. So you can see very quickly and easily, we've now created a subsection just using the value of London. If I want to change that to something like Cardiff, so it only display those. 
you can see that now displays the Cardiff ones. So I could use multiple ones in conjunction with each other. So we could say only want to show events in Cardiff on the, the month of December, for example, or in the year of 2019. So you could set things up very easily to create any kind of post query that you want using either individual or multiple different queries to filter your data. You could then use that with a pagination option to very quickly and easily create great looking, easy to navigate archive pages to display your information using Jet Engine and Jet Smart filters. Now I have literally just scratched the surface of what you can do using these filters inside Jet Engine. In further videos, we will take a look at more real world examples where we combine some of these different filters to create our own custom archives, custom post layouts, and so on. And we can really get down and dirty and create some really great looking, powerful websites using Jet Engine, Jet Smart filters, and Elementor Pro. So what are your thoughts on Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters? Do you think this is something you could implement into your own design projects? If it is, let me know in that comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback on this and what we're creating in this particular playlist. As always, if you've got any questions or any feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. I'd love to read everything you've got to say about the videos and the content we create. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know what you did or didn't like about the video. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. They are affiliate links where applicable and it costs you no more money to purchase anything through those links, but it does give a small percentage back to the channel, which we massively appreciate. Helps us create more great content for you. Speaking of great content, check out these videos on the side right now. And my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.